Uh, next question, please. Matt Sell, the so-called Boris Island, the proposed new international airport to be built on reclaimed land in the Thames, appears to be finding renewed and growing support. Would the panel like to comment? The, this, the Boris Island, because it was, was the originator of the thought, or one of the originators was the Mayor of London, um, and the government is saying that it's going to look at it. But your lot in the coalition hate the idea. Is that right, Danny Alexander? Well, when we came into office and formed the coalition, one of the things that we uh, agreed between the Conservatives and, and Liberal Democrats was that we were not going to build uh, a third runway uh, at Heathrow. Uh, airports, of course, are controversial. I know that. Having Inverness Airport in my own constituency, which you'd all be welcome to come and visit at any time as uh, tourists to the Highlands. Um, uh, and we're going to be, as a government, bringing forward a consultation soon to look at all the options for how we can maintain our hub, uh, our hub status uh, in the South East uh, of England. Uh, now, of course, this is one suggestion. I have to say I think it's one of the least plausible uh, suggestions, not least on uh, cost grounds, but it's right to look at all the options, and that's uh, certainly uh, what we'll do. But is your position at the moment is I thought you were against, the Liberal Democrats were against any new airport of any size in the South East or any new runway. Is that, is that your starting point? Uh, that's, that's the starting point uh, from our election manifesto. It's the starting point from the coalition agreement. But on economic grounds, we need to look in the longer term, out beyond this parliament, at are there steps we need to take to ensure that we continue to have the air airport capacity we need to, ser to serve as a global hub, which so, Heathrow, so you have which, Heathrow, your... which Heathrow does at the moment, and that's why we're going to look at the options. That doesn't, that doesn't mean we've made any particular judgment on which way to go. But and you... I have to say, I think the idea of building a, an airport in the Thames estuary is, is one of the least plausible uh, suggestions, but of course uh, we need to look at it. So you're having your cake and eating it. Peter Oborn. <laughs> I, Sorry um, about that, uh, just a comment. I, uh, <laughs> or a question. Okay. Question, it was a it's question. To share, right? that would be a... Instinctively, I'm very much in favour of Boris Island. I think that we have to look uh, to the future. Britain is growing, we're part of an international economy. We have to look to the East, we have to look uh, to Russia, we have to look to the States. Uh, and it's clear that, that over time Heathrow just isn't big enough. And what I'm struck by observing this coalition government is the enormous ambition of it. I think we're moving into a really rather encouraging phase, reminiscent of the Victorians in some ways, of British politics. When we ha uh, like them or loathe them, there are big, generous ideas. The, 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 the plan to put the railway up to the north of England, Boris Island here, what Tessa Jarl had so much to do with the Olympics. And, uh, and, and there, are, there is a, an excitement and a grandeur about some of these visions, and it's something which who, somebody who believes in the future has to welcome. Mark Walker. Well, I, I'm against Boris Island, and I think we have to ask ourselves some fundamental questions. Everybody accepts that aviation produces carbon emissions, dangerous for the environment, global warming and the future for our children and future generations is something we should all be concerned with. Here's an interesting statistic. If you fly from Heathrow to Paris, you produce ten times the amount of carbon emissions than if you go by rail from London to Paris. Ten times. So the question we have to ask ourselves is if we care about our future and we look at the economy and we look at the changing world, we can't just accept that if demand goes up, you keep feeding it and feeding it, because ultimately we'll just have more and more and more airports. We should ask ourselves, is there a different way of doing things? Does everybody who flies, for example, all the time, do they need to fly? Are there other ways of doing it? Could we invest money in high-speed rail, for example? When there was investment in France in high-speed rail, something very interesting happened. On the journey from Paris to Marseille, the share of the market for, high speed, for rail went from 22% to over 70%, so much so that one of the major airlines stopped flying from Paris to Marseille because everybody would rather go by train. Proof that when the train service was improved and it was priced properly, that there's an alternative to aviation. But the argument for this airport is that it becomes an important hub not so much for flying to France, but for people who go back and forth to the very important 
so-called BRIC countries, countries like Brazil and China and, and so forth, long journeys, and that if you want to be part of that game and giving people work as a consequence, you've got to go for it. That's the argument put. I understand that's the argument put. I think my point is, is that we cannot just give in to the ever-increasing demand for, for flights. If we need more flights from Britain to China, maybe we should ask ourselves, could we open up more space, for example, by having a lot of the short-haul flights now turned into high-speed rail? So what I'm getting at is the environment should worry us all. Aviation fuel, by the way, huge subsidies for the aviation industry. They don't pay tax like okay. anybody else. We should ask these questions rather than rush to build airports in places that don't want them. Shut him. London. Well, I agree with a lot of what both Peter and um, Mark Sorotka have said. And they were saying lot, opposite things. And, <laughs> no, no, I, th I, I think it was a nice complementarity um, in a number of the points they were making about uh, the rec how you reconcile ambition and uh, sustainability. But the serious point here is that uh, the Prime Minister has now had to kind of take his head, metaphorically, out of the sand that he buried it in just before the election in uh, refusing to countenance a third runway at Heathrow, a decision, incidentally, that I was uh, in favour of, because the economy of the South East, the economy of the UK, needs more airport capacity. I think that the test has to be uh, matched against Mark's, uh, Sorokka's tests of uh, sustainability, uh, which would certainly have been part of the plan for the third runway at Heathrow. I think that the right way ahead now is to consider a whole range of options, which is what I think the coalition are now going to do, taking special account of if uh, Heathrow uh, loses its hub status, you know, does the airport be become downgraded with effects on local employment, the local economy, and more widely. But the important thing is, this is a 15-year project, and rather like the Olympics, which is a 10-year project, you've got to do these things beyond politics and on a cross-party basis. Otherwise, nothing never <coughs> happens. And so we have in, uh, offered cross-party talks to be full, fully engaged members of the, uh, the process of reaching a conclusion on this, and I hope that the coalition will extend in the national interest an invitation to us. Would you like to extend an invitation? Um, Member of the coalition, not Chief right Secretary. now. But no? um, uh, do you like uh, the idea? Do you accept the general point? That no, you don't not, do that? I, I, I do accept the point that um, on these big projects, and Tess has played a very important role in the Olympics. Uh, having politicians of all sides involved makes a real, real difference. But this is something at a much earlier stage. But there are major projects too, which we're pushing through, like high-speed rail, for example, where again having that consensus in Parliament is a very important mm. part of making sure that they happen. Let me ask the audience here in Essex, in general. You live in the southeast, obviously, but in general, do you support the idea of additional takeoff and landing slots? Do you support a new airport or more runways in one form or another in the southeast? Would you put your hands up, those who do? Those who think you don't need any more, would you put your hands up? Huge majority believe there shouldn't be any more. Um, and I suppose that's not totally unrelated to the fact that you've got airports relatively close to in the form of Stansted, and if Boris Island went ahead, it wouldn't be that far away either. Would that be true? Hands up if that makes a big difference to your thinking. Hands up. Does it? Doesn't make any difference to your thinking? Gen general view that it doesn't make any difference. Um, it's just a matter of principle. OK, thoughts on any of that? Any answers? Which is 03 700 100 444, the number. We'll go to our next 